Finally, billionaire Elon Musk's SpaceX has shaken hands with technology giant Google in developing satellite broadband. This collaboration between the two firms is going to hold a lot of substance for every internet user. This is also the basis for changing the network service of all mankind in the future. So in today's episode, let's find out more details about the cooperation of these two companies and what it really means for the development of humans with Great SpaceX. But first, if you're new to our channel, a sincere welcome from the Great SpaceX team. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you won't miss out any of SpaceX's latest news on our channel. Now go ahead and grab your favorite drink and let's simmer down on today's episode. First of all, how will SpaceX and Google usher in a new era of the internet? In fact, Google Cloud and SpaceX have announced this partnership since May. They will collaborate to set up the infrastructure needed to deliver high-speed data to businesses including secure access to the cloud and broadband internet infrastructure. Under the partnership, SpaceX will build Starlink ground stations within Google Data Center properties. The ground stations will be connected to Google's fiber optic network to enable secure low latency delivery of data for more than 1,500 Starlink satellites launched to orbit that could provide service to rural and remote locations via Google Cloud. To date, SpaceX has launched over 1,700 internet beaming Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit out of over 12,000 that will be part of the broadband constellation. The company is already already providing beta service to customers in the United States and abroad. Google data centers will help SpaceX's Starlink network enable internet and cloud service around the world in any location, including remote areas. Organizations with broad footprints, like public sector agencies, businesses with presences at the network edge, or those operating in rural or remote areas, often require access to applications running in the cloud, or to cloud services like analytics, artificial intelligence, or machine learning. Google representatives said, Connectivity from Starlink's constellations of low Earth orbit satellites provide a path for these organizations to deliver data and applications to teams distributed across countries and continents quickly and securely. This new service for enterprise customers is expected to be available until the end of 2021. The deal represents a victory for Google as it works to take shares from Amazon and Microsoft in the fast-growing cloud computing market. Investors are counting on Google's nascent cloud business to boost growth in the event that its advertising business slows down. While Google's cloud business delivered only 7% of parent company Alphabet's total revenue in the first quarter, it grew almost 46% year over year compared with growth of 32% for Google's advertising services. However, it's also an unusual type of deal for Google or any other cloud provider as it relies heavily on Google's internal network that connects data centers rather than simply outsourcing functions like computing power or data storage to these data centers. So why did Google decide to break this rule? Bikash Kohli, Google's head of global networking, said, This is one of a kind. I don't believe something like this has been done before. The real potential of this technology became very obvious. The power of combining cloud with universal secure connectivity is a very powerful combination. Thomas Curian, CEO of Google's Cloud Group, said, They chose us because the quality of our network and the distribution and reach of our network. Amazon popularized the public cloud business with the launch in 2006 of general purpose computing and storage tools from its Amazon Web Services division. Google introduced its own computing service in 2012, but over the last two decades, Google has also spent money assembling a private fiber optic network to connect its data centers. While much of Google's cloud growth has come from taking care of computing and storage needs for clients such as Goldman Sachs and Snap, the SpaceX deal will draw heavily on Google's networking capabilities. Cloud providers have increasingly focused on the telecommunications industry, particularly with the ascent of 5G connectivity. In the last few months, for example, Amazon said Dish would use AWS infrastructure to deliver 5G service to consumers. In SpaceX's case, there is no need for cell towers. Instead, customers' devices will communicate to satellites, and then the satellites will link up to Google data centers. Inside those data centers, customers can run applications quickly using Google's cloud services, or they can send the information on to other companies' services that are geographically nearby, enabling low latency so there's minimal lag. Data then comes right back through the Google data centers to satellites and then down to end users. 
the deal could last seven years, according to a person who declined to be named discussing confidential terms. Starlink's service might be valuable for consumers living in places with limited internet access, as well as businesses and government organizations running projects in remote areas, Kurian said. He anticipates that having Starlink draw on Google's cloud network will lead organizations to deploy applications inside Google's cloud to take advantage of high speeds. In addition, SpaceX is upgrading its Starlink gear. They are adding laser terminals on all future Starlink satellites. In September of 2021, they launched 51 Starlink satellites, which is the first whole batch of laser-equipped satellites. These SpaceX lasers are expected to improve how the satellite network relays broadband signals around the world. These will enable the network to operate with fewer ground stations. They'll route data around the constellation between satellites rather than between Earth and space. Fewer hops between the ground and orbit reduce the time it takes for a signal to travel between destinations. The goal is to provide Starlink patrons with improved latency. Wow, this is a huge leap forward in tech. Unfortunately, what the laser-equipped satellites did not do is address the ever-concerning controversy that Starlink is problematically bright. Light pollution, as astronomers might call it, can cause problems for them as thousands of styling satellites would effectively make astronomical images useless by leaving long, luminous trails. Musk, however, dismissed those worries and said that he would paint the satellites black if needed to facilitate their job as he is a man of science. Another concern raised by some is that of a collision in space, which the company is trying to prevent. Shotwell quoted, This Starlink employs autonomous collision avoidance technology, adding that the worst thing in the world is to have a collision Amidst all concerns about the privatization of the cosmos and traffic jams in space, Musk is not stopping as of now and shows no inclination to do that as he always soars high. And that's all the information we have for today. Have you used Starlink connectivity? What do you make of your experience? And what would this ambition of Elon Musk mean for the internet? Let us know in the comments down below. If you like what my team and I are doing and would like to help us with a little nudge, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Everyone's support will be the motivation for us to create more quality content. Another way you could support us is by giving us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes of Great SpaceX. Be sure to leave a comment about what your thoughts are because we always get a kick out of reading them. As always, this is Kevin and my team and I will see you next time.